continue. Great, Savannah, um, so it's open. Welcome everyone. We're gonna be starting momentarily as uh, Savannah opens the session and welcomes everyone in. All righty, going to go ahead and start on time today. Thank you again for everyone joining us for the third of five sessions in our five part series uh, with the Easton Chamber of Commerce. Today's session is maximizing your certification. I'm Julie Irvin Hartman. I'm Susan Repka. And we'll be your speakers for our time together today. This series wouldn't be possible uh, without the generous sponsorship of Cadence Bank. Susan's going to put uh, David Vasquez as well as Solomon Saldeo's information in the chat. Please, if you are seeking funding for your business or looking to set up a business account, we strongly encourage you to at least consider Cadence Bank for your business and personal needs. Our session sponsor today is Port Houston, and we are so fortunate to have Natasha here, and we're going to open up the microphone and have her share some information about the port and how you can maximize your business certification with Port Houston. Hi, everyone. As Julie mentioned, I'm Natasha Ainsworth, certification generalist with the Port of Houston. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit today, today about the benefits of enrolling in Port Houston small and NWBE program. Port Houston has an economic impact of nearly 802 billion across the United States. By enrolling in Port Houston small and MWBE program, you'll be able to participate in exciting procurement opportunities. Currently, Port Houston has a 35% port-wide small business goal. And beginning July 1st, we will have a 30% aspirational M and WBE goal. Other benefits to enrolling include um, being involved in Port University, interagency mentor protege program with the city of Houston, and industry specific forums just like this one, and one on one meetings as well. If you would like more information um, about our programs or to enroll, uh, you can reach me at nainsworth at porteason.com or 713-542-9039 is my cell. I will also put all this information in the chat for you. Again, thank you so much. Natasha, we really, really appreciate um, having the port as a part of, of this session, as well as an overall uh, member of, of the East End Chamber of Commerce. So please, after today, reach out to Natasha. The port is, is an amazing resource. And I've actually gone through Port University and it really, really helps you understand how the port works, how you as a small business can not only support the port's goals, but also their overall mission objectives and strategies, not only here in Houston, uh, but how the port, Port Houston impacts the entire nation. So thank you, thank you again. So today's big thing and talking about maximizing your certification is opportunities. And when you have a certification, this allows you as a business and as a business owner to have so many more opportunities than people who don't have their certification. So about 15 years ago, there was this woman owned, or excuse me, this woman owned business and she had 80% of her business come from one client. And she was jamming along and life was great until that one day that that business decided not to pursue that line of work that she was extremely involved in. She had heard about getting women owned certified. So she went and did that with the WBEA. After that, she continued to get other certifications, Metro certification, City of Houston, and it transformed her business. That person was me and that was my business. And when I got certified with Susan, when she was at the WBEA, it totally changed the trajectory of my business. 
And that can be you. That can be each and every one of you. So whether you have your certifications now, you're thinking about getting your certifications, or you're not exactly sure what that piece of paper really does for you, that's what we're gonna cover today. And all of those opportunities that I took advantage of when I owned a business, there's even 10 times more opportunities available to each and every one of you. There are people here who genuinely care about you, your success, your trajectory, your impact, not only in your immediate neighborhood, but the impact within the East End Chamber, the impact within Precinct 2, the impact in overall Houston. So today and all of this time is about each and every one of you. So our time together, what we can expect from us as speakers and making sure that we're giving you value is what you can expect from Susan and I, an engaging session. We're gonna be flipping back and forth when one of us is speaking, the other one will be over there on the chat. Tools for immediate implementation. I'm talking about things that you can do like on Monday that will help change you as a leader within your business, as well as your business strategy and your profit margins of your business. Certification can do that. We're gonna allow time for questions. If there's a word or phrase that we use that you're not quite sure of, or you don't understand, put it in the chat and we'll be, be more than happy to answer it and make sure that you leave today with a full understanding of everything that your certification can do for you. And what we expect from you is to listen and participate. We want you to test drive these ideas. We want you to provide feedback. Send us an email, send Monique an email, send Natasha an email and let us know how things are working for you. And then most importantly, we need to share and celebrate in each other's successes. And those are little successes and big successes. Together, we will all get there. We only have 90 minutes together today. So this is an overview of certifications and how they impact your business. The foundation elements, as well as steps for success. We're gonna tell you how to go ahead and, and, and once you get your certification, what's next and what you need to do even before your certification so you can get it. Unfortunately, due to time limitations, we can't cover everything that you need to know. We're gonna put our contact information in the chat so you can reach out for us. Some disclaimers, it's not a guarantee for certification. It's also not a guarantee for government contract. So our agenda for today, we've got eight big pillars that we're gonna cover. And Susan's gonna talk about how did we get here? Why do we even have these certifications? So in my 14, 15 years of dealing with certification, many people would come up to me and go, why? Why are we doing this? Why are they requiring all of this information? So let's kind of go back in history and talk a little bit about how certification first got started. So in 1963, the year I was born, um, Kennedy signed an executive order. And this was to utilize advisory organizations and committees that were separate from the federal government. It started the process of organizations looking into how the federal government was spending their money. In 1969, President Nixon signs an executive order um, the creating the Office of Minority Business Enterprise in order to help the federal government utilize minority owned businesses. The interesting thing about this process, it would start out with minority owned businesses. That, oh wait, women owned businesses too. So it was always kind of a couple of years behind, but it was basically how are we utilizing companies um, across the US that they pay taxes. Um, they are a significant uh, economic driver for the United States or small 
women and minority-owned businesses. So in between 72 and 73, a survey was done to small businesses across the United States. It was sort of part of the US census. Are you doing business with the federal government? And for the most part, the answer is no. And so that started the National Minority Purchasing Council, which later became the Minority um, Business Center, uh, National Supplier Minority Business Council that we know today. So in 1983, another executive order was signed mandating the government to do business with minority businesses. In 1997, the Women's Business Enterprise Alliance was formed in Dallas, Texas. And that was to ensure that women had a seat at the table and that their certification, because the federal government had decided that women no, were lo no longer considered minority-owned companies. So a new certification had to be created specifically for women. In 1998, I joined what was the Houston Women's Business Council, later became the Women's Business Enterprise Alliance. And shortly after I joined um, Houston Women's Business Council, we became one of the partner organizations for Women's Business Enterprise National Council, or we bank. So we were one of their first partners. We covered 97 Texas counties, which is only half of Texas. In 2004, Julie had Keystone Resources and she decided to expand her business and get certified. I did her first, very first site visit. So that's how Julie and I became appointed. And then in 2011, the federal government realized that they've had a 5% goal of doing business with women-owned businesses for years and yet to meet that goal. So they created a, the women-owned small business and the um, economically disadvantaged women-owned small business certification, which WeBank also um, will handle for women-owned businesses. And now, Julie. So uh, Susan told you a little bit about herself and, and here's some more information on her um, and here's some information about, about me and, and you guys can find out more about us on our, on our LinkedIn profiles. But the one thing I really want to drive home is 80% of my business's revenue was through government contracts. When I went to sell my business, the value of my business increased because I held government contracts as well as the length of those contracts. So there's definitely a long-term play here that can be a huge part of your exit strategy as a business owner pursuing government contracts. Susan's gonna put our information um, in the chat so you we can stay connected. And so what does that mean, right? Certification, and we, we've talked about that. And Susan went through the, the, the history. So. A certification validates that the business is a few things. So if you're a woman, it validates that 51% of this business is owned, controlled, operated, and managed. Those are very important four things. 51%, the majority of the business needs to be owned, controlled, operated and managed by a woman or women, right? Collectively. Very similar thing for minority owned, right? Once again, owned, operated and controlled by a minimum of one US citizen whose ethnic background is at least 25% Asian Indian, Asian Pacific, Black, Hispanic or Native American. Then the third criteria that certification validates is that your business does not exceed the small size standards. Those are set by the next code set by the federal government. For example, if you own an architectural firm, the size standard 
that you would exceed and you would no longer be a small business is $15 million, okay? So a lot of us have nothing to worry about for quite a while um, worrying about those small business size standards. What we consider a small business and what the federal government considers a small business might be a little bit different, all righty? Your certification, you get this piece of paper, right? Which is awesome, yay. Let's cheers to that and have a margarita. It's not wall art. You can frame it, put it in a prominent location. That's important, but it is so much more than wall art and a piece of paper. We're now gonna turn it over to Monique Petaway, who is Metro's small business certification specialist. And she's gonna tell us all about the great things about getting Metro certified. Good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you again, Julie and Susan for inviting me. Um, it's, it's always a pleasure putting on these workshops and making small businesses aware of what Metro has to offer them. So I'm going to um, briefly tell you what Metro has regarding their certification. We, we offer an SBE certification. Sorry, it's taken a long time to load. Um, let me scroll back to the beginning. And I'll be brief, um, but the whole goal of Metro's Office of Small Business, we want to make sure that you guys get to participate in Metro's procurement process. And the main way to do that is by getting certified, okay? So there's four different categories you can fall within. As you can see, construction, professional services, general services, supplies and equipment. Now I will be echoing some of what Julie said, but I'll be brief uh, regarding the requirement. Okay, so your firm does need to qualify or need to meet certain qualifications before you can even consider uh, SBE certification. So say for instance, there's more than one owner. Each owner's assets and liabilities must be below $1.32 million. So both of you guys are all owners with 5% or more, that personal net worth needs to be below that threshold. As Julie said, you still have to show that your company's gross receipts are below the industry size standards. And those size standards are set through the SBA. If you're unfamiliar, please visit sba.gov look up NACE codes to see where your company falls. So Metro certification process is 100% online. Thank God, paperwork is out. <laughs> so, you know, everything can be uploaded either electronically. We do have a fax option in place, um, but if you fax it on your end, it'll be scanned on our end and attached within our system um, to your application. So. We did that, um, of course, for confidentiality purposes, but we wanted to make it easier for our applicants. Some of the other requirements is that you do have, or you show us that you have at least $5,000 in revenue within the last 12 months. So you can either show that through your business taxes or your invoices and proof of payment, okay? So the minimum is that you have to show us you've been in operation for a year through at least one year of business taxes. If you've been operating longer than that, if you've been in operation for three years, we want three years of company taxes. Two years, same, two years, okay? So same thing. Now, once you are certified, if you're approved, it will last for three years. So you only need to worry about renewing every three years. And our system will automatically generate an, an email as a reminder. We'll send that out 60 and 30 days out to remind you. Our certification is absolutely free. Um, once, you're, once you meet all those requirements, like I mentioned, I'm not gonna go over them again, but I will mention that uh, you do have to complete a personal net worth statement and an affidavit. So those documents have to be notarized and added with your other supporting documents. Some of the other certifications that we accept Metro accepts DBE certification only from these DBE entities, okay? We also accept 8A, but that's so rare 
<laughs> you know, I feel like DBE uh, should be highlighted, you know, because that's the one, that's the main certification that we accept if you want to get expedited with Metro. So what do I mean when I say expedited? Of course, that means quicker, faster, okay? But in uh, certification terms, the processing time. So if you're DBE certified and you say, hey, Monique, I, I have my DBE certificate. Sometimes I can just go in the system and create an application for you, depending on the circumstances. If there's something that you want to bid on and you've been chosen to do that bid and you're not certified with Metro, but you have a DBE certification, I'll be more than happy to create that application for you, get you certified as an SBE so you can get working on that contract. Okay. Even if you're not, there is an application process that we would like for you to complete because we want all your current information, but it's really easy, really short. It's only a two pager. You attach your DB certificate and you're good to go. Okay. So these are the agencies that we accept DBE from city of Austin, Corpus Christi, North central, South central text dot and out of state DBE. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, a lot of times people think that Metro only needs bus parts or anything related to the bus. Yes, we do. But there are a lot of other services and supplies that Metro procures. And this is just a sample. This is really, a, I couldn't get it all to fit on my slide. Okay, I would have had two or three pages of slides listing all of the services. So if you see this, this Metro, we buy all kinds of things, okay? Now, of course, we don't buy them at the same time, <laughs> but we buy them as they're needed. And each department may have a different need at a different time, okay? So some of the construction-related services, as you can see, the air system, HVAC, of course we need that. Architecture and engineering, we need general construction, consultants on construction, demolition, cleanup, office supplies, paper products, pest control, plumbing, you know, sound recording stuff. I mean, you know, the list goes on and on. Staffing services, translation. I mean, we need, we need more things than what people realize, okay? And this is just a sample. So please don't count Metro out. If you find that, you know, we don't have anything currently, uh, solicitation that's out that uh, fits your services or your company services, just hang on. Something will come out, okay? But I'm going to tell you where to go in a moment. Some of the benefits of certification. Once you get approved, you get included in our SB or small business certification directory, okay? A lot of times I see that once people are certified, they don't add it to their business cards or they may forget, or they say, oh, I just printed some cards. I'm not gonna reprint them. No, make sure you get that information on your business cards. You wanna market your certification. It's so important. You, you are standing out from other small businesses based just based on your certification. There's still a lot of small businesses out here that do not even have it, may not know anything about it. Okay, so once you get it, that is a notch that you need to be proud of. So put it on your business cards, include it in your capability statements, put it on your company website, brag about it, let everybody know. So there won't be any question. Okay, you also have access to our training courses, seminars, uh, you know, some of the workshops that are, are coming up. The I'm certified what's next that's already passed, but navigating through Metro's procurement website that's coming up June 9th, creating a safety plan June 23rd. So each month, my partner, uh, Sharonda Murray, she handles outreach. Each month she has at least two workshops, two to three, that we highly, highly recommend for you to attend if you have the time, okay? They're very beneficial. We also have the Mentor Protege Program. Now that has already started. Um, it's about nine, it's a nine week commitment. They started taking applications in March, but if that's something that you're interested in, interested in, please visit our website. You can, you can try to go for it for next year. Okay. Um, you get notices of 
procurement opportunities, solicitations. It's very, very vital that you register as a vendor. And I'm gonna show you how to do that um, on, on the next slide or in coming up, okay? Now we used to have face-to-face -face networking events. Hopefully one day we'll get back there soon. Um, that is my hope. I'm sure we will though. And like I said before, some of the other agencies that accept Metro certification, of course the port, okay? HCC, Houston First, Fort Bend ISD. If Metro does not have anything that you're interested in or any solicitations that are out, please, please, please utilize your certification from Metro with these other agencies. That's an advantage that you, you, should, you should really consider. We have their information on our website that links you right to their website. You can get registered. You can check to see what solicitations they have. Reach out to them. Sometimes our partners call us and ask us, hey, you got a list of small businesses that can do such and such work? You just never know. It's like you're constantly, when you're a small business, you're constantly marketing, constantly, constantly making connections, constantly trying to build a rapport with primes, with agencies. It's a constant effort. So I hope you have the energy to continue to do that. Okay. And registering as a vendor, very important, very important. Even if you decide not to pursue certification, just register as a vendor, see what type of work that is coming out. You can also look at the type of contracts that have already been awarded. We tell people, look at those contracts, see who the primes are, reach out to those primes, already establish a relationship or tell them what you can do because that you never know what other projects they may be bidding on. If they're not bidding on something with Metro, they could be bidding on something with the port or with the city. Make sure you establish that rapport with them. So they will remember you and reach back and maybe contact you for, for the work. Yep. And if you have any questions on how that, that process works or, or what you need to ask in those conversations, you can reach out to me. We put Monique's contact information um, yeah. in, in the chat and she'll spend time and walk you through the certification if you have questions. Yeah. I recommend going to Metro's website, downloading the certification, going through it so you understand it, yeah. and then calling Monique before you start the process. So when you send it over to her, she can expedite it and get it done as fast as possible. Thank so, you. Thank we, you. And yeah. I'm done. I'm sorry. I went over. It's all good, Monique. <laughs> we would love to give you all Thank 90 you. minutes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you everyone for your time. So just to continue on, on what Monique was talking about, you count, you count as a small business, you count as a certified small business and, and, and you count because of all of these disparity studies that are going on. There are so many agencies that need and want to help small businesses. And so these disparity studies, Metro has a disparity study, city of Houston, Harris County, uh, the state of Texas hub. So when you participate or other small businesses participate, you count, your numbers count. We're going to be emailing you Metro's fact book. So Monique, the awesome Monique processed 863 firms got certified in 2019. That's amazing. Metro has 2,000 SBE firms in their database and they're rocking it in their um, goals. They have a 35% goal. They hit 51%. I mean, you talk about a commitment to, to small businesses and minority and women-owned businesses. There's the numbers. The numbers speak for themselves. And Metro has so many other opportunities that are non-transportation related. Um, so we're going to send you this, this, this report and you can learn more. The hub, the state of Texas, Susan's going to put that in the chat. This is the link to their semi-annual report. The state of Texas collectively and all of the different departments and organizations within the state have awarded $1.35 billion, with a B, billion dollars to 3,032 firms. 
I want each and every one of your firms to be in that number when it's updated at the end of the year. Monique's used a couple of words, we've used them, and I wanna pause here and make sure that everybody understands the difference between a prime contractor and a subcontractor. A prime contractor holds the contract, right? They are the ones who Metro or the port is going to sign a contract with. As a subcontractor, you are going to send your invoices to the prime. The prime is the, the point of contact. The prime holds um, all of the accountability uh, and all of those things, lots of responsibility. But here's an example. So we're gonna use construction since this is a, a, a construction focused program. You've got the general contractor or the project managers, the prime. So a project might have three, they need three subcontractors to perform the scope of work. So painting and sheetrock, electrical, and HVAC, right? And so that's how this relationship works. And we're going to talk even more about relationships a little bit later. Monique gave you the link on how to register for Metro's um, website. So each agency that you want to do work with, you're going to need to get registered. And a little tidbit, get registered before you call Natasha. Get registered before you call Monique. Get registered before you call Veronica at HCC. So then when you start the conversation, they know you're serious about doing work with them. They know that you can follow directions because you've already gotten registered and you're prepared to have the conversation. And so here's the link for Houston Community College's uh, vendor registration website as well as some additional information regarding their SBE compliance program is here on the screen. And what's great about all of these vendor registration sites is you're able to look up maybe your competitor so you can see who else is playing in this sandbox. So you have a much better understanding of, of the environment and who you're competing against, right? How amazing is that, that you have all of this information at your fingertips so you can determine what your competitive advantage is. Monique talked about current bids. How do you find out about opportunities? Well, here's the information about opportunities for Houston Community College. Monique talked about Metro opportunities as well. Port, here's the port registration, right? Um, for Natasha, and they list their opportunities on a website called BuySpeed. Right, and there it is right there because the port changed a systems. So if you were in the old port system, you need to update your profile in by speed um, by, by, by May 31st, <laughs> which is gone. Um, so if you have questions about your port profile, make sure to contact Natasha. The port, this is amazing, right? We're talking about numbers in the Bs here, right? The port generated $7 billion in business activity annually. That is just amazing. Susan's gonna to continue to talk about additional benefits of certification. All right, we kind of have went over the fact that certification is not just wall art. You don't know how many site visits that I would go to um, for women-owned businesses and ask them, well, how is your certification working for you? So it's hanging in your wall, on your wall. So how are you getting any business from it? No, I'm not getting any business. Well, what are you doing? Well, it's hanging on my wall. So this certification gives you that competitive edge. It allows you to diversify your customer base. So whether it is your, your, your state certification, and you look at all of the different state entities, Prairie View A&M University, U of H, Bellotto, Texas Department of Criminal Justice. What do they buy? So it gives you that, um, kind of allows you to kind of look outside of the box that you're in right now. It also allows you to participate in these goal these contracts that have goals. So state of Texas, there is a goal on every contract over $500,000. 
You can increase your marketing and awareness. Do a press release, let people know that you've gotten the certification. Email past customers. You never know who's tracking their numbers. There's event and networking events. Um, so WBA has an expo each year. The Minority Council has an expo each year. There's national, there's um, for both the women and the minority, as well as all of these different organizations that we've been talking about, HCC, Fort Houston, Metro, have training classes. And eventually, we hope, those will go back to in-person networking events where we're actually going to do face-to-face. -face. And you're also listed on these directories where people can go in and look. I am going to the state of Texas directory on a regular basis to find uh, hub certified companies to participate in opportunities um, from, that our clients are going after. We need, we need these. And the one thing that biggest benefit is there's a support system. When you get certified, you have people that are there to help you, like Monique and Natasha, and you know people at the WBA or the HMSDC. They are there to help you grow the capacity of your business. So let's talk about some considerations as you're going to get certified. Um, if you haven't gotten that certification yet, and you're trying to determine whether this is right for you. So what are your client needs? Your current client needs, as well as if you've done any strategic planning and you know who you're going to be targeting, what certifications do they accept? What is the time frame in which you need the certification? Well, we, you know, I, I will have to say that I help a lot of clients go after different certifications. Metro is one that we go after first because Monique gets the job done quickly. Other organizations take a little bit longer. You can expect um, most certifications to take up to 90 days. There are um, some that are, are behind and it's gonna take a little bit longer. The site visit. You need to make sure that you are have the time on your calendar for them to come out and interview you. Um, some of them are virtual now. I believe we're going to start going back to face-to-face -face site visits. So, do you have the time and your on your schedule for someone to do that? Also, the renewal terms. Each one renews a little different. City of Houston, three years. State of Texas is four years. Um, WBA and HMSDC require or require that you renew each year and that you have a site visit every three years. And the processing fee, some are free, some have a fee to apply. So you need to look at all of that information and make the determination of which one is the best fit for your company. You can get multiple certifications, but you kind of need to prioritize them. So we're going to kind of give you some highlights of a couple of certifications, Metro and um, HCC. Always, I think we're going to focus on Metro. Metro is free. It's race and gender neutral. You can use it for the poor. You can use it for uh, Houston Community College. Um, so, and as well as Fort Bend. So the benefits of that certification is you get to utilize it for multiple entities. Um, so they have a small and disadvantaged program. Um, Julie's going to be dropping that information into um, the chat. Now the city of Houston is also free. However, they are running a little behind schedule, so you need to be very patient right now with the City of Houston certification. Um, however, they are working as hard as they can to get these processed as fast as they can. But if you need that certification, you need to apply now, but it may be early 2022 before you actually receive it. 
So part of the certification process is knowing your NAICS codes and your NIGP codes. So you're going to need those numbers, whether you're applying for certification or you're just going after government business. So the North American industry classification system is used on most applications um, for certification. And then it is used by the federal government to determine um, what industries are on each bid. So Julie's going to drop that in there. And also, if you drop your email into the chat, I can actually send you um, a couple of Excel files, one on the NAICS codes and one on the NIGP codes that will help you. Oh, it's a little bit easier to find what your company does if you don't have that. So these organizations have compliance programs. So it's not just we're going to set a goal and we're going to get a contract um, and we're get, you know, giving the prime this contract and we're going to tell them that they have to do 30%. If they list a small business on there, they have to do business with that small business. And they check that. They make sure that these primes are really fulfilling those goals with the small businesses they have listed. Um, here's our NIGP um, search. All right, so let's talk about your application. So in 14 years of certification, we denied about 10, eight to 10% of the applications. So these are some things that you can look for when you're going to get certified. So there are a lot of documents that you're going to be turning in. We have the general documents, which is your resume, the proof that you are a woman or a minority. We have your financials. We need to look at you know, your profit and loss, um, your balance sheet, your tax returns. Um, we have the list of your personnel, your legal documents, as well as any management agreements. So the certification application is all of that information, each one of the certification that you go after is going to have a little bit different list of documents, but they all fall into those buckets. So on your legal documents, your, your, your formation, your partnership agreement, your bylaws, your operating agreement, financials, tax returns, balance sheet, and then of course we have to have, you know, your office lease and your equipment. So why do people get denied? Well, that's pretty straightforward. You turn in your documents. No. So quickly through to some of the certification mistakes. These are reasons for denial or that can just prevent you from even applying. Number one, they don't understand their own legal documents. Most denials are based on technicalities. In reality, the woman or the minority is running the company, but when you look at those legal documents, there is something in those documents that prevent her from having the legal control of the company. So an example is a corporation that is 51% um, woman-owned and 49% non-woman-owned, and the quorum is 75%. She can't make any decisions without the other partner. Um, that's, that could happen in your operating agreement, your bylaws. So you really need to read and understand your own legal doc documents. One of the things that it's not really that it prevents certification, that it can be um, a challenge for people is they find the opportunity and then they apply for certification. Doesn't work that way. 60 to 90 days, or in case of city of Houston, six to nine months. You need to apply for certification before you need your certification. You only have a certain amount of time to start and complete your online application. After 90 days, they're going to kick you out of the system and you have to start out. You have to start gathering all of your documents before you start your online application. 
Another challenge that people have is they are not aligning the certifications that they're going after with their business goals. So now they have all of these certifications that they're not using, but they need a certification they don't have. So look at what your three to five year goals are and take and put those certifications with those goals. Yes, you need the certification before you need the certification, but it doesn't make any sense to get a certification that you know you will never use. Um, this is my favorite. Get a certification application. I'm putting all of their information together and I'm like, hey, do you work at the company? Well, yes, I'm the president. I'm the owner. Well, it's not on your resume, so you might want to update that. Take a moment to look at your resume and make sure that your current position at the company that you own is listed. While you're at it, look at your LinkedIn. Make sure it's listed there as well. Or they let their certifications expire. They've done all of this work. It's posted on their website. It's posted on their business card. It's everywhere. It expires. All of that has to be updated or somebody's going to go, hey, we looked you up and you don't have a certification. I actually had that happen the other day. It's listed on your website. You're not certified. Or I've seen companies that will list pending certifications. Oh, we're going after that. We've submitted our application. Don't ever, do not ever, ever list a certification that you do not currently have. Um, turning in some of your paperwork that's not signed, whether that's your stock certificates, your minutes, um, copies of your loans, and they, they have to have those signed copies. And you do need to have both your NIGP and your NAISC codes for certification because we're going to you're going to put those in different places. And Julie is going to talk about maximizing certification. You've done all of your prep work. You've gone over everything and you have it right. You have your Metro certification and you're ready to rock and roll. Right. So what's what's next what what do you need to do and 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 go and, and shout it from the rooftops and and start those relationships monique touched on those relationships not only the relationships with the organizations that certify you not only the relationships with fellow people that are on the chat today relationships that you're going to meet from joining the eastern chamber of commerce but other relationships. Life is about relationships, and especially in government contracting, a person that might be your competitor today is going to be that person tomorrow that you're going to need to be on your team so that you can win the contract. We are all here together. We are all here to support each other. And trust me, we have thrown around tons of really big numbers. I'm talking numbers in the billions, guys. There is enough work for everyone all righty so back to that prime and subcontractor example right how do you find out about bids how do you find out where these opportunities are well houston community college their current bids is there right and so you can go to metro metro and hcc both have a place that have archived bids now you can do your research you can see when the bids came out how much they spent, who submitted on them, and who was awarded, right? And so you go and you find a bid for the exact type of work that you do. Now you know who currently holds it. We'll reach out to them. Let them know about your company. Let them know that you have your certification. Let them know how you want to work with them to grow your business, all righty? Every, excuse me, let me rewind. Not every bid has a pre-proposal conference or a pre-bid conference or a pre-submittal conference. They're called different things. Julie, what does all of that mean? What that means is that's a meeting. Right now they're virtual. Back in the day, they were in person. It's a meeting about this bid, about this opportunity where the agency talks about it and this is amazing you get a wealth of information from these 
pre-bid meetings or pre-proposal conferences. Some of them are mandatory. What that means is if you don't go, you can't play. If you can't play, you can't win. If you can't win, then guess what? You're not getting the check. All righty. If they're mandatory or non-mandatory, as a subcontractor, you go. All righty. Because this is the perfect place to start those relationships. We have two examples here on the screen from a pre-proposal conference. They have sign-in sheets. And what they're looking for is firms that are certified. And you can see here, right? Are you bidding as a prime, yes or no? Are you certified SBE, yes or no? Who's your certification with? To get past performance or to get experience in the government space, start out as a subcontractor. Learn the ropes, learn the processes. You can still put that information on your website, on, on, on your project profiles, because you did work, right? So primes are going to be looking at this sign-in sheet to see who's certified to put on their team. You, as a certified small business, are going to look at that sheet a little bit differently, and you're going to look for the primes, right? Because those people need you. They need you so they can hit their 35% goal. They need you to help them fulfill the contract. On the right side of the screen is, is a proposal conference sign-in sheet uh, from a virtual conference. So you've got email addresses and people's names and the same type of information is provided in the subsequent columns. As a subcontractor with your certification, guess what? You can be on multiple teams, right? So the city of Houston, if you wanna do work out at the airport, you can be on up to three teams. So that's three subcontractors. I would go to Vegas any day with those odds, right? So with these relationships, you really want to choose about three or four to start that approach, right? This isn't a shotgun approach. This is, I love Susan's word, this is patiently persistent, right? So you're going to email these people, you're going to call them, you're going to email them your capability statement. And who, who are these people that you need to get to know, right? Well, these are the small business liaison officers. These could be the buyers, right? Because the buyers, like Monique said, they, they may have smaller opportunities um, to, to give you, hey, you know what? I'll take five projects that are $1,000 each all day long, because that helps me build my experience in the government space. Who are these other people? Well, they could be the Prime's project manager, who that's going to be the person who's actually going to be leading the project. We'll start that relationship then, because I guarantee you, if that Prime is at this pre-bid meeting, they're going to be at other government contracting opportunity pre-bid meetings, right? So they can help you get in with other entities as well and other subs, right? Because if a sub is working, say, with, with Telepsin and they're like, hey, I'm on this job and we need, we need a plumber or, hey, I'm on this job and, and, and we need a marketing person, um, use each other to help you grow this network of relationships. All righty. All of this is money, guys. Opportunity equals money. And with your certification, it helps level the playing field. It gives you an advantage that other companies don't have. I love the word opportunity because that means money. So you've gone to the pre-bid meeting, you've, you've got that information, and now you're going to start that relationship. Primes are going to request some of the same exact information that, guess what? Metro, Port, City of Houston requested for your certification. If this looks also a little bit familiar, if you've gone for a loan lately, or maybe you're looking to increase your business's line of credit, same type of stuff. So I strongly encourage each and every one of you to make a folder on your computer, to have all of this information ready to go. Because if a prime calls you and says, hey, Julie, we have this great opportunity, we're ready to go. Can you get that to me by tomorrow? And you go, well, I don't know where my W-9 is, or well, I don't have a capability statement or 
oh, I haven't gotten my insurance yet. You've got to be able to go and you've got to be prepared. So, so do all of your homework. If you don't have all of this information organized and ready to go, then put that as one of your action items to maybe start next week, next month, or maybe by the end of this quarter. But the key that these primes are looking for, whether it's Manhattan, whether it's Telepson or whomever, they want you to be able to promptly follow up. And if you're gonna tell them you're gonna get it to them by tomorrow, you better make sure that you can. If they ask for it by tomorrow and you say, can I get it to you maybe by, by Monday or Tuesday, whatever, then they've got to agree to that, right? So make sure that expectations are clearly communicated from the, front, from, from the beginning on what you're gonna be able to deliver to them when they request information. Their forms might look a little bit different, right? So here's an example of a subcontractor form. So in addition to that information that they're gonna ask you to attach or upload to their website, they're gonna ask you to fill out a form. Do not, I'm gonna say this again, do not hand write these forms, okay? If you need help typing information in, reach out. There are people, we can help you, other people can help you as well, right? This is your first impression with a prime. You need to make sure that they know that you are professional. Alrighty, so here's an example of an online registration. Some are online. So you can see right there, they're asking, do you have your hub certification? Are you SBE or are you MWBE certified? Alrighty, when they have an opportunity, they're going to you. Our good friends at Telepson and um, Tad Telepson did an amazing chat and, and he was just so inspirational in our capacity building session um, last week. That's gonna get posted on, on the Chamber's website very soon. Talked about building capacity. They are a 112 year old company here in Houston that started with this great grandfather taking drafting classes at the YMCA. So you talk about being able to scale, being able to build and giving back to the community. They have an entire section on their website dedicated to subcontractors. After the chat, after today, we're gonna include, like I said, the Metro's report on their spend. We're also gonna include to you Telepsib subcontractor form. So you can start getting all of your information together. Just like your certification, when you send over your subcontractor packet, make sure that you have every single item addressed. If you need somebody to look over it before you send it out, definitely do that. Here's a little bit farther along on Telepson's webpage where they talk about right there, hub coordination and their open bid opportunities. These are jobs that they want and need small businesses for. Once again, it's that opportunity. These doors are open to you, each and every one of you that aren't open to everybody else because you have your certification. Telepson's small contractor form is seven pages. Don't let that be intimidating. A lot of this information you're gonna have because you, got, you have your certification and you've got your capability statement. So here's some examples there. And in the bottom right-hand corner, absolutely, Telepson is not only asking if you're certified, they wanna know what memberships you're involved in. Telepson is huge in the community and they wanna make sure that they're aligning themselves with companies that also community involvement is important to as well. Block, we're gonna hear from Block next, next week actually in our subcontractor section, in our subcontractor session, sorry. And look right there on the Block, uh, the Block subcontractor form, item number three, right below safety, certification. So you know absolutely that the block company is dedicated to growing small businesses. It's a huge part of their growth strategy here in Houston to get and align themselves with certified companies. Monique touched a little bit on shouting from the rooftops on marketing your certification. Doesn't do anybody any good if it's just sitting on a wall in your home office, right? You've got to shout it from the rooftops. You've got to tell people, what, well, how, right? How, how am I going to tell people uh, about my certification? Well, we've got a little marketing your certification checklist for you. Absolutely. In some of these, 
you can start on Monday. Some of these you can do today. Some of these might be a little bit longer play, right? A trade show booth, well, that might be 2022, because who knows when we're gonna go back to that. I sure hope soon though. There's some examples there, and here's a whole nother page of additional items to add to marketing your certification checklist. We're gonna show you some great examples of these. Here's an example of our good friend, Greg, with Honesty Construction Group. So Greg came to our capability statement session and he said, hey ladies, I need some help with my capability statement. So that was the before and here's the after. And right there, we have his certifications. He has the um, NMHC certification. He has the hub, the city of Houston, section three, higher Houston first and, and Metro, right? There they are right there. Now, depending on how much room you have on your capability statement, depends if you'd like to put the number or not. But back to what Susan said, these certifications have to be active. Don't reach out to Monique and ask her to fast track your Metro certification if your certification with someone else is pending. Pending doesn't count. You've got to have the piece of paper. Already, our good friend Chef Yo and her certification in catering, she's got a catering business. She's been able in the last year to secure a contract as a prime with the University of Houston providing catering services as well as Pearland ISD. Statement of qualifications. So this is a little bit bigger than your capability statement. So this is kind of the next level of some marketing collateral that you can use to market yourselves to primes and to send after um, the pre-bid meetings. And this is, as you can see, you've got a little bit of blurb of the people who are doing the work. You've got uh, some little project profiles. And then of course, what's included is the certifications. On your business cards, I'm gonna show you a couple different examples of business cards that have certifications on them. Here's Meg Toops, she is in the technology space. So she has an industry certification as well as her WBE certification. And that's on the front of her card. Rebecca Nutt with Agency 8, she has a two-sided business card and she puts the certifications um, on the back with the, she certified WBEA and with the state of Texas. Your website, right? What a great place to put your certifications and take it a step further. Don't just put the logos. When they click on the various icons or logos from the entities, link them out to your company profile. So if I clicked on hub right here, then it would take me to um, PB Medical Billings listing on the hub database. So you can quickly see all of her next codes um, that she is both woman certified, I mean, um, W and M with her hub and all of the great things that she does. So make it easy for people to learn more things about your company. Trade show materials, you've got the flyer and you've got your big pop-up banner there that you can add your certifications on, right? Sales material, when you're emailing sales material out to, to people, whether they're in the government space or not, put it on there. Somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody, right? It's all about those relationships. Social media, add that to your checklist that maybe you could do tomorrow or Monday. Add your certifications on your social media. When you get your certifications, post about it on, on social media. When you renew your certifications, post about it on social media, all righty? Handouts and flyers, some other examples of sales material um, that you can put your certifications on as well. Uh, brochures. So it's consistent, right? You see the branding of Agency 8. She had it on her business cards as well as she has it on her sales materials. Meg Toops, right, with Blue Sky. She had it on her business cards. She also had it on her trade show materials. When you're filling out your company profile, right, make sure that you list it there as well. When you're sending your company profile out in your subcontractor packet, Make sure that you reiterate it. Yes, you check the box that you're certified, but make sure that you also put it in your company profile. A note on that, don't lead that you have your certification. That is not the most important thing that people need to know. I'm saying include it, all righty? 
Don't put it as the first one or two sentences. When you do get big and you are responding to proposals as a prime contractor, make sure to put it in your cover letter that you as the prime contractor are certified. If you're self-performing the work, then guess what? You get 100% of the credit. If you are gonna uh, subcontract out any other part, really try to make an effort to choose other subcontractors, subcontractors that are also certified and that RFP or RFQ might have requirements and goals that you're gonna have to hit anyway. Vehicle graphics, we were actually at lunch one day eating and we saw this and we took a picture with, with our cell phone. If you have a need to put graphics on your vehicles, whether you have a fleet or it's just you driving around town, use that as your billboard on wheels, right? So here's a coffee company right there, woman owned certified right there. So people can see it because you never know where you're going to be or who or where anyone else is going to be that is looking for a certified company. If you do any email marketing, maybe you're doing a newsletter that goes out, make sure to include that, include your certifications on your email marketing materials. And obviously, hang it proud and hang it loud in, in your office or your library, but make sure that you hang it in a very prominent location. Don't put it in the break room with all of your HR stuff. You've worked really hard to get your business where it is. You've worked really hard as a business owner, and you've worked really hard to get your certification. So it is not wall art and make sure you hang it loud and proud. Oh, we have covered a lot of information. So now we're going to talk about some resources and education that is available through small business programs. These are paid for by your tax dollars. Utilize this. Those tax dollars are hard at work trying to grow the capacity of small businesses. So HCC has um, some different, uh, they call them virtual subs and sandwiches. At one time they were actually in person, but you know, grab your sandwich, sit down in front of your computer and hear about the HCC small business program. They've had Block, they've had the Port Houston. So they're always looking for organizations to come in and educate people on how to do business with them. So here's the one on June 16th. Julie's going to drop that in the chat so you can go ahead and add that to your list of things to do and get registered. Here's the list of training events that Metro provides. Um, they, they actually provide OSHA training throughout the, you know, at least once a year. So you need to make sure that you are looking on their website, sign up for their newsletter, find out what training is available. This is free training. Um, Julie's dropping that into the chat. City of Houston. City of Houston has some, some programs available. Liftoff Houston, Turner Const uh, Construction School of Management, um, all of these different programs available to small businesses in the Houston area. Um, Liftoff Houston is actually a business plan competition um, with some prize money involved. All right, so now we're going to sort of summarize how you are maximizing your certification. So I hope everybody took notes today about what your action plan is going to be. What are you doing? Um, well, quarter one is, is over. <laughs> what are you doing the next quarter and the next, you know, and all the way up to the end of the year? Start putting all of that information down and create that goal list of what you're going to get done. So we do have um, two additional um, programs. We have the subcontractor package next Thursday. And then we, we're going to wrap up our five-part session with Easton Chamber with a panel discussion that, that includes University of Houston, Houston Community College, UT Health, the Henshaw Group, which is a small business, and Manhattan Construction Group. So they're going to talk about opportunities and how they have utilized um, 
the small business programs. Now, if you don't know the Henshaw Group, Tony Henshaw was the Director of Public Works for the City of Houston. So he's got some really great insight on the City of Houston. So some of your action items are to um, sign up for the rest of the, the two remaining programs. I hope that you're going to become an East End Chamber member. We're going to need you to complete the survey. This is how we determine what programs the East End Chamber is going to offer, as well as how Julian and I can improve the sessions that we have. They will be posting the recording, and I know we've had several people ask that. They will be posting the recording. It normally takes about two weeks. So watch their website. Um, so when that's posted, listen to it again. We cover a lot of information and we do it very quickly. So this is an opportunity to listen, stop, make some notes, listen some more, um, so that it's not at quite the pace that we run it. Always make sure that you're matching your certification to your business goals. Each certification can take you days or months to get. I have clients that we started the process in January and we're still gathering documents because you have a business to run. It takes a long time to get all of the information pulled together. So unless you have a person in your office that's going to be head down on certifications, make sure that you are working smartly and getting the ones that you need the most first. Start gathering all of those documents that you're gonna need. Put them in a place where you can get them quickly. If, they, if you only have them hard copy, Go ahead and have someone scan those for you because you're going to need them electronically. All certifications now, or at least after June 28th, since the state of Texas is moving to an online system, is an, you will be uploading your documents. Now, I do think Monique said that they will accept them fax, no, really, then they have to scan them. Take the time to scan those documents. You're gonna need them for other certifications, so let's be nice to Monique. Um, if you are certified, if you already have taken the time to get that certification, pull out your marketing material. Pop up that trade show booth that you have not looked at since 2019 and see if that certification is on there. Or maybe you took the time during COVID to get those certifications. Well, we need to update that. So go ahead and contact your marketing company and have them um, redo your, your banner. Look at your brochures, look at your capability statement, look at your website. Are you listing those certifications? So utilize this time to, to determine what needs to be done. Also reach out to the support systems. Um, Contact the East End Chamber, contact Metro, HCC. Look at their websites, find out what educational programs are coming on. Um, contact Julie and I to see how we can help you. We want to grow your business as a partner with you. If you are looking for certification assistance, a capability statement, some marketing assistance or in some consulting. We do have a $50 off coupon um, that you can contact either Julie or I, and we'll help you um, through that process. So a full capability statement is normally $400. So this gives you that coupon. We're down to 350. Um, if you already have one and you want it reviewed, that review is normally 150 with your coupon. We'll do it for 100. We're going to help you look at your marketing material and determine um, what needs updated. This is our contact information. And Julie's going to, we not, I know we dropped it in the chat to begin with. We're going to 
drop it back in there. We would love to connect with you on LinkedIn, Facebook, um, Twitter. Just kind of, you know, connect with us. Find out what we're doing. We post um, information about upcoming webinars that we do. We have several, um, as well as opportunities. If I find an opportunity in the city, you know, somewhere around here, I'll go ahead and put a link in, on, on my Facebook page about that opportunity. So that concludes our, our formal presentation uh, for this morning. We have 15 minutes uh, left.